call me the pickleball anti-coach. I'm about to tell you three things to do, which most coaches would say, no, Joey, don't do it. But with the rise of carbon fiber paddles and the spin you can get, I think you can pull these tactics off. I really think you can. Pickleball lovers, don't forget to have a good day. I talked to Kyle Yates on Tuesday and he completely changed his drop in motion because of the new carbon fiber paddles. He really did. I was blown away when he said that. Look at his third shot drop. Look at his elbow placement and look at that sink, right? I'm going to break all this down. My point is the times they are a change in. Kyle Yates is changing his motions. We can do a lot more. That's three things we can do. Three strategies that were taboo that aren't anymore and you should do them. The main mistake I see with 3-5 rec players is this. They're trying to get power from here, right? If you look at Kyle Yates, everything is so fluid with his movements, right? His elbow is very close to his side. He's pushing off right here, right? As he goes, it's just that. If you look at the average rec player, that contact points too far and back. They're not rotating through with that right foot. This is a typical rec player, right? They run too far into it. They don't get set up and they're going more this motion. It works, and I'll show you one more time. It works, but you're not getting that crazy spin that we need with these carbon fiber paddles, right? The secret is a small step with that right foot to clear your hips, right? If you're left-handed, be that left foot, but it really does help clear the hips. And let me show you this step, right? I'm not running into the ball. I'm getting low, pushing off. Better, no Kyle Yates. But it's very simple. That elbow is within the side. And I'll show you the typical rec player. The hit point is here, right? Yates, elbow within. That was horrible. So this is my impression of Yates. Ready? Elbow within the side. He's hitting out in front and he can get mad spin. He's actually going a lot higher. One more time. It's a very compact swing. The key is to me that. This is a different view. Look at that right foot stepping towards us. We're on the sidelines, right? That helps clear our hips. It really works. I think the problem is most people run up too much and handcuff themselves. Good point. My next point, the third shot lob needs to be used a lot more. It's very effective. Mark Napotovich just hit it right there, right? And he won the point. No, he didn't. That's Cliff Pickleball, number one station in Orlando. But look at him hit this third shot lob. And I'm going to break it down, but look how effective it can be, right? I mean, if Cliff wasn't that good. With the new carbon fiber paddles, third shot lobs are a viable option, right? What's a third shot lob? We accelerate really fast up, put a lot of spin. And lots of times our opponents are running towards the kitchen, right? And we can catch them off guard. And this is how you hit it right here. I'm really accelerating up really quick and it's sinking. Here it is again. Beautiful. Here it is again. Look how much spin you can get with these carbon fiber paddles. It's a high percentage play. It really is. And you don't like hitting overheads in a tournament. You're really nervous. It surprises your opponents, especially if you're losing some dinking battle. So the key is plant that right foot, accelerate really fast up. It's a brush in motion. One more time right? Now we can hit that from the kitchen as well in a dinking battle. It works, especially on points where there's a lot of pressure. This is a third shot lob from the kitchen, right? Really pretend like you're dinking and lob it up, right? But this is an offensive third shot lob from the kitchen. It's offensive. That was a defensive shot. Way in, right? One more time. Again, I really like to get power pushing off that right foot. And the other way I can get power coming from the side, right? Really disguise it. Because if we don't disguise it coming from the side, what happens? We give it away to our opponents, right? One more time, really push off, really brush, disguise it as a dink, weigh in, weigh in. One other thing I would suggest is to lob cross court creates confusion to your opponents. True, lobbing cross court will create confusion. Middle premise and pickleball, they don't know which one to take, right? And take a look, I'm really coming from the side, really disguising it, and that's weigh in, right? 
This next one I'm showing you, I'm giving it away, right? I'm not coming from the side, and it's very easy to recognize. We have to disguise it. Push off that right foot. I'm explaining that. Another theory that I feel is out the window with the new carbon fiber paddles is that you can't attack from below your knee. I believe you can. These paddles are pretty sick. You have to pick your poison sometimes though. But take a look at what I can do with these speed ups from my ankle. Weigh in. Weigh in, right? Backhand speed ups, ankle level. You can speed it up. It's not always a high percentage play, but if you're faster than the opponent in front of you, I would do it. Below the knee, weigh in. <laughs> Below the ankle, weigh in. <laughs> Below the knee, I still can get a ton of spin, right? So that theory is out the window with the new carbon fiber paddle. So yes, it is. Another taboo theory that can be thrown out the window with the new carbon fiber paddles is spin on dinks. I think you need to do it if you want to play pro. I really do. When I teach my clients how to spin dink, I have them do that, right? And that, and that, and that. Let's try some. So now I want to manipulate it and put some spin so I can move my opponents around a little more. That ball might kick with the top spin. I can put slice, but it's a low percentage play, right? Because I'm still not used to it. So think about it. But look at that ball spin one more time. And I'm going to go more into detail on how to dink with spin because I'm learning myself, but I think you need to do it. You can slice that forehand too. You see a lot of senior pros do it. Anything you can do to gain a little more control with your dinks is going to help you. The key is, is it hurting you more than it's helping you? I would say if you practice it enough, you should spin with dinks. Save 10% on any paddle. Check description for codes. Don't have a friend to drill with. Check the spin shot programmable ball machine deal in description. Pickleball lovers, do you agree with me or do you think I'm crazy? What are some things you do in rec play that work that are frowned upon by most coaches? Save 10% on any paddle. Check description and don't forget to have a good day.